All right, we're back at it again. Part two of the NPC main screen explained. Uh, thank you so much for your feedback for the part one. We're going to go further just a little bit. This is going to be a short video because there's not a lot of icons on the left-hand side. And we're going to we're going to talk about these icons over here on the left side on the main screen. So this is your main screen. We hit that main button. You're going to go right there. And these are the icons here. So those are the icons. Let's dive right into it. So that button right there is the main screen. It's similar to the button up top over there at the top it kind of looks like a home thing this one does not change even though this one above it does change but that's the main screen that's always going to get you to the main screen uh when you're looking at the different modes right there uh very straightforward piano roll uh this this icon right here represents the piano roll this is where you edit your notes pitch length uh you can do some very um in-depth editing to your notes the timing of them where they land and also you can change the length of those notes right there you can't really add too many effects on there it's okay i think it could be a little bit better but it's definitely a good tool so when you want to edit your notes that you already recorded on your key groups that is the place to go right there so that's the uh, piano roll let's go to the next one the next one is the overview of tracks this gives you kind of like a universal view of your audio tracks and your midi tracks the mpc works with both midi and audio tracks on every sequence so Every sequence that you have will have a collection of MIDI tracks, which is basically what these tracks are right there. And then audio tracks, which obviously contain audio. And you can see what the key group ranges are and things of that nature. That is the track view. Now, next is the step sequencer. This kind of gets you into the FL Studio or TR style world as far as programming because what happens is is that when you press that button right there you get a different display and you can use the pads as step buttons and you can see the where the sequencer is at by how the pads are being highlighted and you can tap the pads that you want to be triggered and and the interesting thing is is that you can trigger the pads with different velocity by how hard you hit them or you can have them at full level it's also the place where you can program step automation and put effects on your notes like ratcheting probability randomness things of that nature on every notes panning effects filter effects there's a lot of parameters you can add per step with the step sequencer and over here is the xy ff mode and this is pretty interesting because what you can do is control different effects across the x and y axis so if you want to drag your finger around it and do some effects with the filters tape stop stuttering you can do that in real time you can also record that with the automation settings we talked a little bit about what the automation how that works uh, but this is kind of like your global automation but we're going to but we're going to go a little bit in depth as to far as what you can do on the individual tracks right themselves so that's the xy fx mode it's pretty cool i like to use it for live i want to just kind of blow people's minds and look like i'm doing something really doing something impressive i'll just go there and just kind of tweak the beat if the beat's already rocking and everybody's rocking to it i'll go there and kind of make the beat chop up and things of that nature and then also this is the show and high channel strip panel right here this is a little button right there and it's contextual so you can see that we got a program highlighted right there but we also have it right here as well so when you hit that eye a small channel strip will show up and it'll show you the input settings the output settings of where it's going to go um, mute solo record arming things like that so that eye kind of gives you a little bit more in-depth view of different things there's a lot more to see in there um, and definitely I'll probably will go into that in another video. So that was a little bit about that section. Like I said, it's going to be really short, but I just want to give a great, plain, straightforward explanation on that. If you like this type of content, please leave me some feedback in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe, and also hit up these links right there. Hit me up if, if you got a question at uh, .com. Uh Definitely hit me up on IG at DLEOT2K or check out my music on Spotify. Definitely join my email list or check out my website, DLEOT2K.com. Uh, definitely leave me your feedback if this helps. Like I said, I know it's a very basic thing, but I think it's very important to understand the fundamentals of the MPC if you want to do the advanced stuff. So definitely I hope you enjoy that. And I'll see you guys in part three where we go to more things, where we highlight what's going on in the screen. So stay tuned for that. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.